Simon French. Simon, very good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, are you reassured? Well, Quasi Crossing's doing the right thing, but you could have argued he should have been doing this last week rather than this week, because reassuring the markets, what you, you have a plan, you have a strategy, the sort of underlying, if you like, method to what is seen in the markets as a bit of madness, is the type of thing you do to prepare the ground for a budget statement, not what you do retrospectively when the markets have already largely drawn their own conclusion. But that being said, the, the, the comments that he made that I've certainly read in the papers this morning at those meetings yesterday with city bosses were pretty much just a repeat of the same lines that we've heard from Liz Truss's campaign and from him over the course of the last few days, which has very much been, you know, this is about going for growth. Mm -hmm. This is about, you know, trying to attract investment. What was said yesterday that was new that has reassured the city in any way? Uh, nothing. And I don't think the city are necessarily looking for a policy U-turn. What they're looking for is credibility of the people who surround Kwasi Kwarteng and Liz Truss. The problem has been that the voices that have come out in support of this uh, project are not the most credible mark, uh, voices in financial markets. And a lot of the, if you like, the grown-ups, the, the Bank of England, What, the what Treasury, kind of voices? When you say those voices that, that aren't trusted, what kind of voices? Well, you're talking about, um, you know... Whatever one's view of Brexit over the last six years, the economists that have supported Brexit in 2016 have promised a version of Brexit that hasn't crystallised. So when they're now talking about this plan for growth raising the UK's trend growth, you might want to give the government the benefit of the doubt, you might want to give those voices the benefit of the doubt, but you're also looking at the last six years and what was promised and what was delivered as being quite diametrically opposite and saying, how credible is that? It all comes back to credibility. If you can boost that credibility, the markets will give you the benefit of the doubt. If you don't have it, they'll behave like they have in recent weeks. And where are gilt yields looking this morning? Because in many ways, I'm told, the gilt yields are almost more of the story than sterling. And, you know, average Joe can understand sterling because sure. we all deal in, in currency. But gilt yields is where traditionally we were on safe ground in this country and they're all over the place. That's they? right. So this is the price or the year interest rate for which the government can borrow. And for many of the last few years, it's been hovering around 1%, 2%. 5 to 6% is currently the interest mm. rate. What that means is that passes through pretty quickly, pretty instantaneously to the mortgage market. Now, there are 80% of mortgage holders who are on a fixed rate deal, but it's as, as those fixed rate deals come to an end, and it's about a third of a million households per quarter, so about 1.2 million per year, whose deals come to an end, they have to go back into the market to try and find a new deal. They could have been securing it back in January at 1, 1.5, one mm. maybe 2%. They're now looking at 5 to 6%. That is thousands of pounds increase in the mortgage market as a direct result of those gilt prices you mentioned. Mm. Yeah, and, and this warning as well from the IMF, uh, essentially telling the government that this is going to increase inequality, that mm. the government needs to rethink this. How will the markets feel about that? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure it's the IMF's role, the International Monetary Fund, to be talking about inequality. That is a much more of a political issue. But the, the economics behind what they're trying to say, which is you know, a lot of the, if you like, the institutional credibility we've just spoken about isn't there, is a salient warning. And whether you believe the International Monetary Fund have a good record, they are listened to by institutional investors. Mm. There is a signal provided there, which means people sat in Washington, Berlin, Beijing, thinking about allocating capital to the UK, they see warnings like that and they're less likely to do it as a result. Mm. And what about Janet Yellen's intervention, the US Treasury Secretary, um, saying she's monitoring what's happening in the UK? I mean, they, they clearly think that this is unexpected, almost sort of non-rational <laughs> behaviour from the UK. I mean, yeah. how much does that affect things? Well, I was on calls to US clients yesterday and comments from both Janet Yellen, the current Treasury Secretary, and a former Treasury Secretary, Larry Summers, uh, who also opined quite negatively on the UK, it frames expectations. Mm. And again, you can disagree with them. It's fine. It's, it's healthy, actually, mm. to disagree with people. Um, but they hold very important roles or have held very important roles. They influence behaviour. There's a signalling there. It's a real problem for the government, for investors in the UK, to absorb that stuff and say, it's all fine. I'm afraid it isn't all fine. The markets, however, need to see signs between now and the 23rd of November when we get a budget that the government is surrounding itself by voices who can speak truth to power. Mm. That's the problem, mm. is if you've got people who are not prepared to say, look, we don't think this is the right path, 
then you have uh, a sort of a, a breakdown of what you know ultimately generates good governance. Well, actually, alluding to that in the in the statement from the Bank of England on Monday, it said uh, they welcomed the role of the Office of Budget Responsibility, which was a kind of coded way of saying you're going to have to give us some forecasts. Yes. Um, and within that, the Office of Budgetary Responsibility is going to be tasked with saying by the end of the forecast horizon, so three years, it could be extended out to five years, they want to see debt as a proportion of the economy falling. That feels like a, a fiscal rule, some sort of discipline that the markets are looking for. There wasn't a forecast in the plan for growth, the mini-budget. One mini was budget. offered. Well, one was offered, but, but it wasn't declined. accepted. And this is the point. You know, for, for political reasons, um, Liz Truss, during the Tory leadership campaign, and some of her supporters were quite critical of the Bank of England, the Office for Budget Responsibility. On day two of the of Kwasi Kwarteng's tenure as um, Chancellor, he sacked the top civil servant in the Treasury. Mm. People see this. Mm. You know, the idea that you know, people aren't sort of watching this, people are watching that, and they take that as signals that you're not surrounding yourself with grown-up people mm. who are prepared to be independent, impartial, give you sensible advice when the chips are down. Mm. You're going to just surround yourself with sycophants. That presents a problem, and markets see that. Um, I just want your thoughts on what your reaction will be, what the market's reaction will be, if, as the Chancellor is heavily hinting and indicating, there will be further tax cuts. Tax cuts per se are not a bad thing. Um, I think we... It's more the borrowing. Yeah, it, it's how you go about delivering those tax cuts. What is your broader plan? Um, the idea uh, mentioned in recent days is that tax cuts generate more incentives to invest, to, to, to grow. The, I have to say the evidence from economic research is pretty mixed on that front, so it doesn't necessarily have a, a lot of credibility. But the point is... If you tour the new, uh, TV studios, as the Chancellor did on Sunday, um, offering up, if you like, sound bites at a time when the market on Friday said, well, what you've announced in terms of firm policy proposals were a bit sceptical on, you're layering on uncertainty. I, I don't think that was a particularly smart decision. And that speaks actually to the point of who was in Kwasi Kwarteng's ear over the weekend saying, actually, maybe just hold back and see how financial markets absorb this before you start explicitly Pushing promising more. Pound. 